It's hard not to love extremely reactive chemicals. I mean, you have to be dead inside to not enjoy a big chunk of sodium getting tossed into a bucket of water. So today I'm going to make one of my favorite evil compounds, manganese heptoxide, as well as explore some of its crazy properties. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't try anything you see in this video at home. Everything is done for purely educational purposes here, and messing with these chemicals could easily start a fire or burn your face off. So please leave this experiment to trained professionals like me. Thanks. Oh, and for the record, I actually am trained to handle nasty chemicals. I went to school to become a chemist, not a death ray technician like you might think. Manganese heptoxide can be made by mixing potassium permanganate with concentrated sulfuric acid, which are both very reactive chemicals on their own. This chemical forms quickly at room temperature. In fact, that green color that you see there is actually that heptoxide forming. I've zoomed in a bit so you can see the green color. Manganese heptoxide is actually an oily liquid at room temperature, but what you're seeing here is technically a solution in sulfuric acid. If the heptoxide was pure, it would actually be a reddish brown color. It's an evil compound that reacts with practically anything organic. Here I have a paper towel. Let's try it with some acetone. Hmm, I wonder if there's any left. Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. Some sugar. All right, let's see what it does to a potato chip. Oh, there it goes. Some charcoal. If you're wondering how such an angry chemical can be made from compounds that aren't quite as vicious, we can look into the stoichiometry. Here's the balanced reaction of potassium permanganate and sulfuric acid. As you can see, water is one of the products, and this is the main driving force making the reaction go forward. The reason being is that concentrated sulfuric acid is a potent dehydrating agent. Now the classic experiment of turning sugar into carbon foam is an example of this. In fact, diluting sulfuric acid in water releases enormous amounts of heat energy, which attests to its strong desire to be diluted. Now, even if water isn't originally present in the reactants, sulfuric acid tends to find a way to make it if possible. All right, this time I'm going to make some of this stuff on top of a block of wood. Let's try it against some styrofoam. Wow, you could almost call that Styropyro. I'm oh, just kidding, that's a terrible name. This compound is also thermally unstable and decomposes rapidly upon heating. Here this 1 watt laser is enough to cause the manganese heptoxide to undergo violent auto oxidation. I then threw in an alcohol soaked cotton ball for good measure. Another demo that utilizes manganese heptoxide is the classic thunderstorm in a beaker. Now I actually first saw this done by Nerd Rage here on YouTube. And basically a layer of concentrated sulfuric acid is injected under some ethanol and then some potassium permanganate is sprinkled on top. Then that permanganate sinks down to the boundary layer and reacts with sulfuric acid to make some manganese heptoxide. And then that reacts violently with the ethanol giving a display of pretty lights that you see here.
guys enjoyed a little bit of chemistry for a change. In fact, I hope I don't get banned for posting this because the last chemistry video I posted got me a strike, so I'm crossing my fingers there. And uh, yeah, my next video is going to be on my laser sniper rifle, so stay tuned for that. And until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.